Let's do it. Let's try. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, let me know. We do this. And uh, people are just waking up. Okay, we are live. We're live. Hello, everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> You're looking in. <laughs> New York City, Broadway, <laughs> L'Enfantane Theatre, a very classic theatre. It's a, a lot of history in this place. Welcome everybody. I know some people are just drinking coffee, they're just getting up. Uh, <laughs> some stayed up all night. and. Uh, <laughs> Are you pl plotting staying up or what? <laughs> Welcome. Uh, you know what? I won't be talking a lot. Michael, wh where are you going to take us? We are going to France. Okay. Celine Fan from Paris wants to say, Dear Yanni, one day you said something like, The inspiration is like a butterfly. You cannot seize it or lock it up. You just have to let it come and go by itself and the butterflies seem to come easily to you. Question one, <laughs> does inspiration come easily to you too? Mm -hmm. Question two, what is the story of butterfly dance? Uh -huh. P.S. thank you for your immense generosity for everything you share with us and everything you give us. We love you, great and young magician. <laughs> All my love from Paris, France. Celine calls me young, young, I like that. They're calling me young now, it's nice. Oh, and one more thing, Yanni. What? I also have a little surprise for you. Oh, I love surprises from Michael. I know you do. <laughs> Celine is actually with us tonight. She is? She is. She flew in from Paris just to see you tonight. Where is Celine? Where are you, Celine? Where is she? Where? I can't see. Oh, there you are. Hi. Wow. <laughs> we get to talk. Oh, awesome. Can we get the shot? Right there. Okay, she's embarrassed a little bit, but it's okay. Welcome. You made it here. You made it. Oh, Celine. Oh. oh. You're awesome. You know, now your family will get to see you all the way in France. They're watching you right now. It's going to be really sweet. I'm glad you made it. You don't have to get on a microphone. It's fine. It's fine. Just stay. You're emotional, I can see. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you're here. We talked on satellite a couple of years ago for the very first time. And now I get to see you in person. You see, dreams come true, huh? That was your dream, wasn't it? There she is. She was talking about butterflies, and Joy earlier on was talking about Ladyhawk. They're all related. Um, you see, I don't really want to get involved too much in the creative process right now, because I feel emotional already. I'm going to play a song for you um, that I have not played. I wrote it actually 44 years ago. I was 20 years old. You do the rest of the math. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, it was two or three weeks ago. I was uh, playing the piano for my daughter, which I have a nickname for, I call her Lady Hawk, because she's my guardian angel. She watches over me. It's a very, uh, we have an amazing connection. I'm very fortunate to have a daughter like Crystal Ann and uh, my lady hawk. So I was playing this song for her. I said, this is what I was writing when I was a kid, and it's called Butterfly Dance. And it's written in seven, eight times signature because I had observed that butterflies never fly in a straight line. They kind of move like this. And you'll know when I play the song. I was playing it for her, and she, I saw her getting tear-eyed. And as I was watching her doing that, it affected me. And I 
I started playing, a theme came out. And out of her emotion, it was like I fed off of her, and then I was playing the piano for her. So I was writing a theme right in that moment. And I have not finished. I have not finished it. It just happened like two or three weeks ago. We were at home. And uh, I c in fact, I cannot play that theme by itself. I have to go play butterfly dance, and then it carries me to this particular theme, which has been, it is under development, which I'm going to develop tonight for you. I will try to put the two themes together and play them for Celine and for Joy and for my Lady Hawk. And here we go, Butterfly Dance meets Lady Hawk.
And my, and my daughter's here tonight, my lady hawk. Yeah, she's here. I love you, honey. Uh, you see how the two themes are related? It's really interesting that, that you can uh, write something 40, 40, 44 years ago. It was probably around before that. Uh, and then it seems like I've been in the other theme. It existed. It's as if, you know, I always say that I never forget music. Anything that I play, even once, anything that goes through my mind one time, is never forgotten. It is always there. I play the piano all the time, and people come in and go, what was that you were playing? I don't know, I'm just having fun. I'm making music. And they say, that was a great theme. Did you record it? I go, no. So you gonna, are you crazy? You're, gonna, <laughs> you're not going to forget it. I never forget. I never forget. It's, just, it's always there. So it is quite possible that the other theme existed already 44 years ago when I was playing with the idea of butterfly dance. And when the time I, I played it after 40 years later was the first time I was touching it. I was trying to play with the song. And it's not a simple song to play. Uh, the other theme just appeared. And so, I don't know if it's new or if it's old. It's irrelevant. Time doesn't matter in the creative process. I'm going to play another song for you right now. This is... Uh, this one... <laughs> I wrote it... Uh, it was at the end of August at the time I wrote it. I was in, uh, in Greece at the time. And, uh, you know, in August, all of Europe pretty much goes into staff mode, especially in Greece. There's, there's nothing. Nobody works there. They just go on a vacation. That's it. In fact, you can't even get arrested in Greece in August. There are no judges. There's no police or anything. It's just everybody has fun. It's a great place to visit. Um, uh, anyway, it was the, towards the end of August at the time, and I... Everybody left. All my friends left. They just went back to work. They left to go to different countries where they came from. And I found myself being alone. And, you know, first couple of nights, I got a little depressed. But it's beautiful there anyway. And I remember one of the nights, I was lonely. And I saw this beautiful moon who was going by and it's over the ocean. And I started playing this music. But it's not depressing kind of music, it's hopeful. Because that's what is in my heart. So, it's not for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to New York City, or any big city. Any big city. You hear these things go by. Um, anyway, the song is called The End of August. And if uh, Linda McPhee is in the audience, that's for you. <laughs> And for all of you also out there.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I like that one. Now I'm going to try to do something. Uh, this next piece of music actually does not exist uh, yet. A, a, <laughs> it's brand new. It's not quite finished yet, and I have never, ever performed this live before. It's going to be the very first time. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> this, I, I'll see what I can do with it. It's a... Uh, See, the ocean has been a very healing uh, element for me, the water. Because I grew up in Greece, and even though I went to school in Minneapolis when I was 18 years old, I moved to America, and you know the story, most of you. Um, there's something about looking at the endless blue, the horizon. Uh, so there's no tree or house or a car to block your view. You look at the infinity, the infinite blue, the deep blue. And that's how I grew up and found solace and healing in the ocean. So I wrote this song a few months ago when I was healing also. I was going through some difficult times at the time. And uh, I, it doesn't have a name. And for now, I'm just going to call it I'm going to call it blue, like the color blue, like the ocean. So the song is called Blue, and I will play it for you. <laughs> Good luck.
Wow. It came out. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Now I need a break. We'll, uh, I'll take a question. 